Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Thank you very much for your continued support here and also my Patreon page, booking lessons with me, sending me donations, and sending me kind questions, comments, and volunteering with your time. I really, really appreciate. This video is an answer to a subscriber. This finalist was wondering how one could produce beautiful tone, beautiful resonant tone like professionals do. Um, very good question. Tone production, beautiful tone is something that we have to work on no matter what level we're in. That constantly requires a further technique because we may have sounded good of specific piece but as soon as we change different types of piece depending on the speed and then the coordination that comes with it, somehow it doesn't sound um, as good anymore. Very, very good question. So um, I'm going to show you what those common problems are and how one could um, try some certain exercises to improve those techniques. Let's first start. So when we're new to violin playing, we're told to keep the bow uh, parallel to the bridge, make sure whatever we are, we need to keep the bow exactly parallel to the bridge same line like number 11 and then let's say we, we mastered it we or sometimes we're told to keep the bow exactly in between the bridge and the fingerboard we call it sometimes contact point three something like this we learn oops we learn how to do that too and at some point we also know how to play different strings by adjusting the right elbow height depending what strings we are in we learn that too but somehow, when I play pieces um, a little more, not so beginner anymore, let's say something like this. Um, which is Bach Minuet number two, which you can find at the end of the Suzuki book one, or near the end. Um, I don't sound as good anymore. What is it? Even though I can play long stroke in open string, no problem. But somehow within that piece, mm, the sound is not quite perfect or doesn't resonate anymore. Um, is it the violin? Is it a string? Is it a type of bow? Or simply the bow technique? Yet my, when my violin teacher plays with my own instrument, it somehow sounds good. What is it? Um, those are all very valuable questions. So we have to understand every solution comes starting with a question and no need to feel bad about asking many questions to me or any other instructors one has to um, question every single thing even if we thought we knew everything that's very important first step in order to solve the problem so once we know what we're asking let's think about those important parts of that um, that affect tone production sound production which are bow placement so we call it contact point where the hair touches on the string the, where you place the bow whether it's near the fingerboard in the middle or bridge um, the bow placement that can be uh, not only contact point also where you place a bow near the frog middle and tip and so on that's a first effect first uh, important part that plays the tone production second one is a bow weight how heavy we make it we can make it very heavy or very softly the light bow or heavy bow that can be any way last one is bow speed how fast we move do we move your bow very fast or slowly slow bow speed and fast bow speed those are three main things that plays in our bow when it comes to tone production contact point bow weight and bow speed now but it's a big category of three but they're a little more into that for example um, contact point in general the contact point where the hair touches and when you're playing lower position the first position contact point the bow can place closer to the fingerboard and it will sound okay but as you get higher position by placing your finger higher, you're shorting the string, the vibrating string. And the same thing that worked, sounded just fine. If I go higher, it sounds a little muddy, unclear. Because the contact point 
has to be changed. So I have to bring my bow closer to the bridge when I get higher position in order to have a clear tone, yeah? So not only that, um, the, when it comes to bore weight, we're talking about same dynamics. If I apply certain bow weight on the E string, it sounds fine. But if I apply same bow weight on the G string, it's weak and whistling. We have to apply a little more bow weight because thicker string needs a little heavier bow. Just like shorter, vibers, shorter vibrating string, the bow has to be placed closer to the bridge, thicker string needs a little more bow. When it comes to bow speed, um, it ultimately has to do the control of your old joints. So moving, being able to move your bow fast is first big chunk, you should be able to move your arm or forearm or open your arm fast and close it. Which we all know how to do it, but while multitasking, while moving left fingers and then changing the right elbow height, talking about opening your arm properly in a fast speed, that can be hard. Not only that, it also has to do knowing how to use your joint, such as a, um, a wrist flexibly, as well as a finger joint, and that can be practiced. Because that has to do, um, if you want to produce beautiful string crossings, you have to know how to keep your wrist straight. And also if you want to have a smooth bow changes, it also has to do knowing how to move your finger joint nicely. Yeah. Not only that, if you want to have a clear attacking tone, not only has to do with your arm, but also a lot of um, a finger movement, a finger joint control. Not only that, and when you go fancy bow strokes such as upper staccato, all three at once. It boils down knowing how to control all part of the joint of a right arm. Now this seems like a lot of things, isn't it? But don't worry, that can be practiced. It, but you have to understand that's one of those many, many little things, but you have to work with the muscles little by little. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can try. Let's start with a contact point adjustment. Contact point adjustment, as you know, as you, I mentioned it, we have to be able to move our bow from, let's say from the closer to the fingerboard, to the, um, to the bridge or in the middle, whatever it is. This kind of motion is not very usual or common for us in general while playing the left hand. So we have to train this one alone. It's important to isolate one technique at a time. It's like, um, um, I'm guessing how the, that's how a car mechanics work. Find out where the problem is and work on that one little by little, one step at a time. Um, I think that's how they do it. Or if not, that's how we should, would like to do. So let's work on the contact point. Simply practicing Placing the contact point for one spot to the next and then the way we like it. Let's name contact point one near the bridge, contact point five near the five near the fingerboard, three being in the middle. So try to practice first a little easier step. Let's start from contact point three on the A string and move to contact point five and back to three like this. And see if you can practice both and down bow, three, five, and three. Like that, see if you can do an old string. Simply, it may feel very simple, but this kind of motion has to be practiced with the right elbow, right arm. That way when you need it, you can apply it as you need it. And then let's say about bow weight. See if you can do open string again. When it comes to bow technique, the best approach is just getting rid of the left hand and really practicing on the right hand on an open string. Try to create a heavy bow. Try to create as loud sound as you can. And then now a little piano, softer. See if you can do it. Whole bow or half bow. And see what contact point speaks the best. If I keep the bow heavy near the fingerboard, contact point five. This is common mistake you do. It doesn't sound good anymore because he, when the bow gets heavy, the bow has to be placed closer to the bridge. So I move it 
closer to the bridge when bow weight is heavy and then bring it closer to the fingerboard when bow is light. Not only you can practice that one, you can also apply it within one bow. Make it half heavy bow, half light bow like this. Again. See if you can three. Heavy, light and back to heavy. And then you can see all the parts that has to be involved in actively um, adjusting. Now last, uh, in order to uh, um, control the bow speed, as I said, there are many parts of the right elbow has to be practiced. Simply, let's start with the big part, open, being able to open the arm. It seems like it's simple motion, but what a lot of violinists do is when they open a little, instead of finishing opening completely by straightening their arm, what a lot of us do is we pull arm backwards because straightening arm completely is rigid, it's uncomfortable, unnatural. So what we do is we open a little, then we pull it backwards. And that's why you want to fix it first by training your arm to open completely. See if you can open completely and of course if you can watch your contact point would be even better. Then. The reason why I'm doing only upper half bow is because in lower half bow, you need to start raising elbow and the wrist as well. They can be practiced separately. But for now, just practice opening your arm completely without falling backwards like this. Yeah, just practice that one. Just train your hand, having full access. It's very important to know how to use the entire bow because uh, whole bow, eh, that's where it comes real power too. And you don't want to limit the tools that's available to you. You want to be able to access all of it to create your beautiful tone in different dynamics. Now, wrist is very important when you do a string crossing. So that can be done, let's say open string, and then see if you can do down bow, but, but when you go down, your wrist goes down. And then up on A string, then when you go up, the wrist comes up. Then down, up, see if you can do. Make bow stroke, having really active wrists. So wrist goes down when you go down, wrist comes up when it comes up. Down at down bow, up at up bow. Here, try not to use too much bow because then you'll have to use your elbow. We want to um, really train the wrist. So try to use short strokes using only wrist. Down bow and up, down, up. Once they're done, and the next point is now finger joint. And that's the hardest one. And it, that's, but that's one of the crucial points where it differentiates from advanced player from the rest. So see if you can place the bow and straighten all the fingers if you can, including the thumb. And see if you can curve all your fingers and then you're trying to create a bow. And down bow by straightening almost all fingers except the index and middle fingers because we need to keep the bow there. Again, so here. Straighten, down bow, and curve, up bow, and then straighten, down bow, and up. Here it's very important, thumb moves as well as just like the rest of it. And simple practicing like that on each string, just training every part of your joint that involves your bow technique. It's more powerful than you would ever think. Every day, five to six minutes, not more than that. And then you have, you're training your muscle how to do, and that's very important. Now, the, and another one very important is train your ears. You have to know what we're after. Listen to good players, go to concerts. Well, with pandemic, it's really hard, but you know, luckily a lot of um, recordings are available at, literally at our fingertip. So listen to a lot of good players, violin players, and also great singers because they they sing with you you can hear natural way we like to phrase or make music yeah so i hope this video was helpful there are a lot of information that i'm putting in one video of course one could talk about it for hours and for days and things like that but these are a couple of things that you can start with it yeah i wish you all happy practicing and let me know how your practice is going thank you very much stay well and happy violin playing Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.